Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick uh, video on flat frames. Now, all of you probably know that flat frames are really important. They remove the netting and um, all the dust modes and imperfections in the uh, in your images that are like you know particles on the on the sensors or on the mirrors or maybe on the on the lenses. Uh, so really important, and it really brings out the SNR a lot more. Now. There's different ways of making flat frames, and a lot of people, what they do is they, uh, you know, they take a computer, they make a, a white screen, and then they put a shirt over it, and that creates a flat field, a flat, an evenly illuminated field that you then take a picture of. Uh, not the best method because obviously you got to hold this uh, laptop over your telescope and. Uh, it's not really cool, right? Um, plus, you got to make sure that your field is extremely evenly lit because if you don't do that, then you can't calibrate the, the flat frame correctly. Another method people use is the sky, right? They uh, wait until it's either dusk or like morning, just what, right before sunrise, um, and then they point it to the sky and they shoot images that way. The problem with that is the sky is never evenly lit. And so uh, even though for the most part people do achieve uh, great results with it, um, you still have a time frame that you have to work with. You have to either wait for this uh, moment uh, to, to take these pictures. So not ideal. The best obviously is a flat frame uh, box. <laughs> so uh, you got to make this yourself because it has to conform to your uh, design, to basically your telescope or your lens. Um, and so I just want to show you what I've done. Uh, I had this for a long time, but you know, might as well show it. Um, so basically all you really need is a way of encasing um, some light uh, and then shooting it through uh, some kind of box with a translucent material in the beginning. And, uh, and that's about it. So I went with, this was hard to find. This is basically uh, some translucent paper that they use for uh, co water coloring and stuff like that. So it's really good. Uh, very evenly, um, like there's absolutely nothing on it. It's purely like, it looks plasticky to me. Uh, there's no like grain in it, no... Uh, just like it looks like plastic film basically which is great this is exactly what you need then you go and buy yourself some light now you can go with led lights you can go with uh, incandescent little light bulbs a lot of people say that you can't use leds because of the spectrum of light that they emit uh it somehow won't work with uh f with your flat frames because um it just evenly gives off uh, all the wavelengths something like that but anyways uh it works fine with me i don't know if this one is this one is not uh doesn't have a battery in it but anyways i bought three of these and um i put them together and i'll show you what i made so <laughs> don't laugh don't laugh this is a huge box it's extremely not um convenient to haul around especially on your long trips um but it does the job and the reason it's so long in my case is okay so I have the, uh, this is the, the dew shield off my ED80, right? The tube is enlarged to 100 millimeters. I don't know. Thanks, Orion and Celestion for doing that. But anyways, so this is your telescope end, right? Oh, my God. See, this is how cumbersome it is. But it's only cumbersome on the couch. In the field, it's actually pretty cool. So the hole, the hole. Let me just turn it on for a second. So in here... I have um, the battery supply, and uh, I have three of these um, three of these lights set like this. Um, so let's turn it on, right? And I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like that. So basically then you take your uh, dew shield, you stick it in there, all right? And then, so your telescope sits like this, 
right? And then uh, you got to push this in a little more. And then, uh, so you place it on the telescope, you turn it on, and uh, you take your flat frames. Now, what's good about this, as soon as you've done your imaging session, um, you basically pop this on, turn it on, do your flat frames, and you're done. Uh, it's as easy as that. So very important to have a flat frame box. I mean, it's not, it's basically for the convenience because like, for example, I'm using a 135 millimeter Rokinen now. Um, obviously the hole for this is a little too large, uh, but I just, just kind of place it over the, the lens like this, hold it with my hand. Obviously I could make a second flat frame box, but um, for the time being, the most important thing with these flat frame boxes is that my field is so evenly lit. Um, and this is why I ha it had to be so long was because, so my light source is here and my film is here. And what I found was um, if I would put the light source pretty close to the film, uh, I noticed that, you know, it would be more lit in the center and then l less, uh, less uh, lit around the corners. So I was playing with the distance and I found that once I get it up to here, it kind of bounces off the box and um, w when measuring the pictures that I took d during my test runs, I noticed that everything was lit exactly evenly. So for me, it was this distance because of this specific LED lighting and the specifics of the, uh, of the film. I think I even have two films. I might have like one here and one here to diffuse it a little bit. But I, I, I've never seen them this big, actually. I think most light boxes are like this big. Um, I'll show you some pictures uh, that uh, during the process of, of me making this box. If you want any help uh, or if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, and I think that uh, if you guys are planning on doing this, this is going to really help you out. And if you're not doing flat frames, well, begin doing flat frames. They're really important. Um, thank you very much and uh, I'll see you later.